Okay. Exactly. And just so you know, I am recording. So if you don't want to be on video, don't come up. So the square root of 3x plus 12, uh, you simply set it less than, I'm sorry, greater than or equal to 0. So we end up with something like the domain is greater than or equal to negative 4. Okay. Go to the stupid spotlight. And let's go, what about something like this? What about where I have, what two functions do I have here? What is, what would you call h of x? I have a 3x plus 2 on top and a square root on bottom. So what type of function does it kind of look like? Polynomial, rational, or square root? It's not a polynomial. It's really the other two. It's a square root inside of a rational because I have a numerator and denominator. So it's a square root inside of a rational, okay? So which rule do I follow? Do I follow the square root, where it has to be greater than or equal to zero, or do I follow the rational? Well, the correct answer here is you follow both, okay? The denominator cannot be zero, okay? And 14 minus 2x has to be greater than zero, so you actually follow both rules. You set your square root, but it just has to be greater than zero because it can't equal zero. And then you would solve. So uh, let's see here, subtract 2x, so 14 greater than 2x divided by 2. x has to be less than 7. x has to be less than 7. And there's your, uh, let's rewrite it. Domain x has to be less than 7. Because if x was equal to 7, my denominator would be 0, and that's enough. So when it comes to these, you kind of have to use um, that math sense a little bit. What are, the, what are the restrictions? Denominator can't be 0. The square root cannot be negative. You just kind of put those two ideas together. Does that kind of make sense? Kind of? Kind of, sort of, maybe? A little... Still fuzzy? Okay, time we have remaining, which is not much. Let's look at Roman numeral two. Roman numeral one was domain, Roman numeral two, we're gonna jump down here and we're going to say, um, Go ahead and jump to composite function. Okay, so composite. What word do you see in the word composite? Composition. Composition, what'd you say? Composite. Okay. You know posit was a word. You said composition. What's another form of that word? Component, what'd you say? Compound? No. I thought you said, I thought you said it. I thought someone said it over here. Composition. Compose. Compose. Okay. Oh, somebody said that. Okay, I didn't hear you. Sorry. I said it I'm sorry. I'm deaf. Don't yell at me. Don't yell at me. I'm deaf. Okay, so composite it means to compose. We're going to compose, or we're going to create, or I think someone said create, or we're going to uh, come up with our own new functions, okay? So compose. Um, so the notation looks like this. Notation is going to look something like um, f of g of x. Now, I will tell you, I do hate. It's going to Herndon, right? MCC. Herndon or SDA? MCC. MCC. It was the. So, notation. I hate this notation. Yes, sir. Like, that's kind of confusing me. Like, when you, like, follow X, 
and I hate this notation because it looks like fog. Because that looks to me, and if I was, you know how, how neatly I write, correct? And how neatly some of you write, that could be confused with F G of X, which means times. So I don't really like this top notation, but you will see it in textbooks, you will see it on, on something. So I don't like that notation. I'm going to use this notation. It's going to be F and then parenthesis G parenthesis X. And basically what we're doing is we're taking a function G, whatever it is, and I'm putting it inside F. Okay? So for instance, if I gave you F of X equals, uh, let's come up with a function. Uh, let's use a basic uh, quadratic. So F of X equals something like 2X squared minus 5. Something pretty basic. And then if you can remember back to Algebra 2 or Algebra 1, if I said find, and all of you are saying, I wish this was on the quiz today, find f of 3, which actually was the very first question on the test. It was just written differently. What do I do with that? You put the uh, x, like you put the x first, right? Say it again. You put 3 in the x place? Yes. I simply take whatever is inside the parentheses and I put it in place of whatever, wherever the x is. Okay, so to find this one, you simply do f of 3 equals 2 times 3 squared, which is what you did on problem number 1 today on the quiz. You simply, wherever x is, you put in the value it gave you. I think x was 5. No, x was 6. So we plug it in and get 6 squared minus 5 times 6, or plus, I guess it was. And then you would evaluate. Using order of operations, you get 18 minus 5, you should get 13. Correct? 2 times 3 is 6. You six. do exponents first. You do exponents before multiplying divide. Oh, that's right. So you do 3 squared is 9. 9 times 2 is 18. Okay, now. That was pretty basic, and we've done that for a while. Well, when I use, if I use this notation, so I'm 100% agree with, with uh, Monty, this is horrible. I like this better because it shows you just put g of x, another function, wherever x is. Okay. So let's erase this, and let's give you another example. Let's come up with another function for g. Let's call g of x. And let's make it a simple linear equation, something easier. So like 3x plus 4, something like that. So now when I say let's find f of g of x, I'm going to take wherever x is in my f function, the outside function, my outside function is f, Wherever x is in its place, I'm going to put what? 3x plus 4, the entire g function. So I'm going to write it as two x squared minus five, and then in place of that x, I'm going to put 3x plus four. And then you would evaluate that however you have to, in this case, squaring and distributing and all that type of stuff. But this function goes inside the yeah. x. Let's do it the other way. What if I said g of f of x? Okay? Now which function do I start with? 3x plus 4. I start with 3x plus 4. So I'm going to start off with 3x plus 4. And then what goes in those parentheses? 2x uh, squared minus 5. I plug in that function in here, 2x squared minus 5. And then you can distribute and this is actually pretty easy. Uh, 6x squared minus 15 plus 4 gives us 6x squared Minus 11 gives us a new function, a new quadratic. Simply composite, composing the new ones. Okay, composite functions, we've seen this before, correct? Okay. 
Okay, so can you, and for lack of space, I'm just going to erase this. Hopefully you have that jotted down. Can you find, can you do f of f of x? Is that feasible? Can you do that? Put a function into itself. Okay, so I went from no to can you to maybe in like three seconds. So now you can hear me? <laughs> Nobody else was talking. It was quiet. When other people are talking, I can't hear. Mm -hmm. Yes, how many of you say yes? How many of you say no, that's mathematically stupid. You can't do it. Okay. No. You're correct. You can't do this. You simply do 2 <laughs> x squared minus 5. And then in the place of the parentheses, what would you put? 2 x squared minus 5. Same function. 2 x squared. Five. You can even do it a third time with G on the outside. You can just keep oh, wow. putting function within inside a function, inside of a function, inside of a function. That's, that's, that's kind of scary. I'm not going to lie. That's, that's they get, a lot. They get really big, but Is we're not going to go past. Time? Like, are we going to end up getting that? No, you'll be doing that. Okay. That's about it. Okay. Function inside a function is about as complicated as we get. All right, so composite functions. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I have a couple of things to look at with composite functions. Uh, oh, on uh, Thursday, when we come in, we'll be decomposing functions. And that will be the last thing we do in unit lecture 14. What do you think decomposing would be? Taking apart. I give you a function and you tell me what's what's the inside, what's the outside. Have a fantastic day with the bell rings. <laughs> Again, that will not be seen when you even talk.